There we go. All right. So like I said, we're uh, look now switching gears here. We've looked at a bunch of properties of functions, but now we're going to look at something called average rates of change, which again is a property of a function at different points. Now, an average rate of change uh, is called the slope of the secant, all right? A line that passes through two points on a curve. It's a nice way of saying from grade nine math, the slope of a line, all right? So instead of, and a lot of, hopefully most teachers use M as for slope because we have Y equals MX plus B when you do linear equations, but what we have here is M and this little SEC, which means the secant line. All right, which just means we're going to use the formula rise over run or some maybe you're a grade nine teacher use delta y over delta x uh but in terms of function notation this is the same thing where essentially you have uh x2 minus x1 on the bottom and maybe some of you well hopefully most of you use the formula y2 minus y1 on the top only now we're in advanced function, so that's just function notation. Y2 is the same as f of x2. All right, so we're going to just be finding the slope of a line today. And then uh, it's going to get a little bit different here uh, next uh, next class. All right, so example one. Uh, show the uh, the graph shows, uh, I should say shows, the distance, kilometers, uh, that a car has traveled over time. What is the average rate of change uh, in distance between the hours of zero and two hours? All right, so we just are finding the slope of a line here. All right, so there's our zero point, and at x equals two, because that's what this zero and this two are, that's our x1. This is our x2. All right, and that point at x2 is right here. All right, so if we are just finding the average rate of change, uh, I'm just going to use my slope formula. So slope of the secant line. So like I said, we're going to have a different line come next class. All right, now my Y2 is right here. And it has a height, because that's what I'm worried about, so I'm interested in, of 200. subtract right because we're finding slope here uh the height of the first point which is actually zero divided by again i'm just going to use my formula up there x2 minus x1 well two minus zero and let's see here well 200 minus zero is 200 two minus zero is two so essentially we're just going to have 200 divided by two which is 100. Now there is some units on here. And again, we're essentially using rise over run here. Rise refers to your y coordinate, your y values, which is kilometers are the units. I'm just looking on the axis there. And then down the bottom here, uh, the x, which is our run, refers to time, which in the units are hours. So the average rate of change in this case, because it's a distance time graph, is 100 kilometers per hour. All right, now I'm going to skip B because we're going to do a bunch of these. Uh, next up, we get uh, what's the average rate of change for the entire trip? Well, I'm going to use this bottom dot again because the entire trip ref references from start to finish. All right, so there's my first point and there's my second point. So again, for the entire trip, if I'm finding the slope of the secant, because that's all we're doing today, Y2, again, is the height of the second point, which uh, happens to be 500 this time out. Ah, the height of my first point is zero. And let's see here. Uh, my X2, well, this is a five-hour trip. And X1 is just simply one. So we have a minus one. And in this case... Uh, the average uh, rate of change for the entire trip, uh, let's see here, I got 500 on the top. I messed that one up. That should be a zero there. I put a one because it's 0.1. I misread that. It's zeros on the scale there. Uh, divided by five, well, 500 divided by five is a 100. And again, the units on my y-axis is kilometers. So it goes first because it's on the top. And on the bottom, again, is hours. So for the one stretch, it's a nice straight line. 
the average rate of change was 100 kilometers an hour. But for the entire trip, it was actually 100 kilometers an hour as well. Even though they did change their speed, as you can see, this graph wiggles. There's some different lines there. All right, but we're, we'll get into some different scenarios here. All right, now, next up, a Bunsen burner, which probably a lot of you haven't had experience with because of COVID and being in a classroom, but maybe you have, I don't know. But a Bunsen burner is used to heat water in a beaker. The table shows the temperature every five seconds. Okay, I better bump that up. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, whoops. The graph shows how the temperature T degrees Celsius of the water increases with time seconds. At T equals 80 seconds, the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius and begins to boil. Determine the average rate of change from B to C. All right, so there's B and there is C. Now this graph, we're into decimals here, but I know B, the X value here is 30. So there's point B right here. I'm gonna mark it on my table of values. I'm glad I have. Let's see here, I move C, I go down with C and it's all the way down to 50 seconds. All right, so again, when you're dealing with a table of values, the X's are always on the left. The Y's are always on the right. And so if I'm finding the average rate of change, finding the slope of the secant. All right, so again, uh, C is my second point. B is my first point. So my Y2 is going to be right here at 91.4. Subtract my Y2, which I move over here. It is 80. All right, then I do X2 minus X1, so it would be 50 minus 30. I need my calculator here. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, yeah, I am for the end. Okay, so then the slope of my secant here, well, 91.4 uh, minus 80 is actually 11.4 divided by 20. 50 minus 30. And then I further get my calculator out here and I do uh, 11 divided by, sorry, 11.4 divided by 20. I get 0 0.57. Now my units. Again, the top is the Y coordinates. The bottom is the X coordinates. So my units up top is uh, for Y is a uh, degree Celsius. Of course, I don't have that. Uh, I'll put a C there. Uh, degree Celsius per second. So the average rate of change between 50 seconds and 30 seconds is that the water temperature is increasing 0.57 degrees Celsius per second. As you can see, it's not uniform here, right? Uniform meaning it doesn't go up at a steady rate. All right, now uh, determine the average rate of change from A to D. Now, in this case, uh, it looks like A to D, that's from start to finish. There's D right there, and there's A. All right, so now when I figure out the slope, again, I'm going to use my formula there. So slope is of the secant line. Again, a secant line is because we're using two points. All right, so my Y2 button this time, or my Y2 value is 100. My Y1 is, uh, well, it looks like it started at, I believe, room temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius, divided by X2 minus X1. Well, X2 is 80, and the start was uh, zero. All right, let's see here. Oh, okay, uh, 100 minus 20 is 80. The bottom is 80, because 80 minus zero is 80. And so the slope, which is again, the rate of change is equal to one degree Celsius per second. So it looks like as the water heats up, it uh, heats at a slower rate as time goes on. In the beginning, it uh, increases or it heats up at a much higher rate. All right. Now, uh, let's see here. Next up. Ah, next time, no graph, no table of values. 
Okay, so it says uh, the depth of a diver in meters for time or for time t in seconds is is given by the function f of t is equal to that big long words all that there. Find the average rate of change for the first four seconds. So what that is telling us here for the first four seconds is that we're looking from t equals zero to t equals four. All right, so now when I find the slope of my secant line, I'm going to use y2, which is going to be f of 4. So I'm going to have to plug 4 in there, minus f of 0. And on the bottom, I have x2 minus x1. Well, x2 is 4. And x1 is zero minus, of course, zero. Now there's a lot of there's a bunch of different ways to do this. The most simplest way to work with this uh, equation is that I'm going to find f4 up here separately because I got to plug four function notation into this equation, and then I got to plug zero into this equation. All right, and so f of four. Whoops, not capital F, little f. F of four. Uh, is equal to 0 0.375 in for a uh, four in for t so that's squared all right minus uh 3.375 i really have to go with this many decimals uh 375 uh t which is again four and then our constant term there is three all right so let's see here uh, I got to do a little bit of calculation. So let's see here. We get, let's see, I take four squared. I'm going to use my calculator here. Four squared. Uh, and then, because uh, I got to do Bedmas, right? So that's 16 times 0 0.375, and I get six. All right. Minus, uh, I take 3.375 times it by four. I get 13.5. Uh, there was a minus sign there, plus the three. All right, and then finally put those two together, and I end up with uh, negative 4.5. All right, now I also need f of 0. And again, it makes it a lot easier if you just do these calculations on the side instead of trying to do it in the formula. All right, well, this one's easy because now I got 0 0.375, 0 squared, uh, minus 3.375 times 0 plus three well zero squared is zero times that thing is just going to be zero minus uh three point three seven five times zero zero and so we just got a three so this ends up just being three all right now to substitute into our values here or into our equation so we got finding the slope the average rate of change all right so i've got uh, f of four is negative 4.5 minus f of 0, which is 3, divided by, well, 4 minus 0 is just 4. All right, so I can keep it going here. Minus 3 point, or minus 4.5 minus 3 is minus 7.5 divided by 4 equals, all right, uh, Negative 7.5 divided by 4 is negative uh, 1.88. Now for the units. Now we don't have a graph to go by, right? So the y units, if we look up, uh, t is in time. So that's kind of like your x. And our y values is meters. And so uh, it would be meters comes first because it's the y value and time is next, which is seconds. So this is telling me that the depth of this diver uh, is decrease. The average rate of change is it's decreasing at a rate of negative one point. Or I don't have to say uh, negative because I'm saying decreasing at a rate of 1.88 meters per second. So that's how fast this diver is dropping in the first four seconds. But now here's what we're going to find out is what about from two seconds to four seconds? All right. So now, again, I'm going to use my slope formula here. So slope is equal to 
Now, y2 minus y1, which is a nice way of saying f of 4. Hey, we already found that. Perfect. We're going to have to save some work here. Minus f of 2, though, because that's our y1. And then on the bottom, we have x2 minus x1, which is going to be our 4 minus 2. Now, as I said, we already got f of 4. There it is. So I'm not going to do work all over again, right? What's the point? So I already got figured out f of 4, and that was negative uh, 4.5, I believe. Just going to go up and make sure. Yep. Okay, but now what I got to do get all over again is I got to find f of 2. Again, I'm doing it on the side, so it's not a mess here. So I got my function there, which is 0 0.375. Uh, t squared, and t in this case, is 2. All right, minus uh, 3.375 times t, which again is 2 plus 3. All right, so just calculating out. So let me see here. 2 squared is 4. 4 times that number, uh, I get 1.5. All right, then 2 times uh, 3.375 is, uh, let's see here, I get a 6.75 here. And then add 3. Three. And let's see, do a little math there. It's going to be negative for sure. Uh, negative 2.25. All right. So now I'm ready to substitute into my formula here. All right. So I got my slope of the secant because, again, it's talking about two points. To change it up next time out. All right. So f of 4 is negative 4.5. Now here's a little trick. I have a minus sign in the equation. And f of 2 is minus. So watch out for that, the double double minus there. Divided by, well, 4 minus 2, which is 2. All right. Now, again, I got negative 4.5 minus minus. Two minus signs come together. Really, I'm adding 2.25, which, uh, well, negative 4.5 is still smaller. So uh, when I do the math there, I end up with actually uh, negative 2.25. And again, divided by 2. And then finally, the average rate of change of this diver when between 2 seconds and 4 seconds is equal to, still going to be negative because the, the depth is decreasing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be much of a diver, would you? Uh, and let's see, I take those and it's uh, I got to round to two decimal places. We're going to something we'll get into. Negative 1.13. Again, the y values. We're talking about meters. The X values, we're talking about seconds. And so in this case, the diver is dropping. It's another way of uh, words you can describe that negative sign. Decreasing or increasing is always used for rates of change. But it's a nice way of saying, hey, this diver is dropping at a rate of 1.13 meters per second, which is not as fast as the uh, f if over the first four seconds. So it's a nice way of saying that this diver drops really drops a lot quicker in the first two seconds than the last two, than the last two seconds. If we're just looking from zero to four, but there we go. So that is rates of change. Uh, again, a lot of grade nine review there.